Hey guys, uh, today I want to thank you about the components of a structural set. I don't know, like maybe the lightning is a little too bright. Uh, let me see if I can check that, change that so that you can see better. Is that a little better, maybe? So basically what I want to show you is just like what is going on with uh, structural drawings and what they have. So usually like your first pages on, on structural drawings are comprised of like um, your first pages in structural drawings are usually just structural notes and TDI and stuff like that. Uh, structural notes is basically like guidelines, like what type of concrete you want to use, uh, uh, the, the like you know typical reinforcements for rebar, uh, grade, like b basically everything that is going to be general to the whole project, and you should be following. In this area, like it also includes like like. Um, TDI stuff, so like sometimes you have like a project that like you need, they need to comply with the Department of Insurance, uh, any other typical stuff or any other like important stuff. But it's usually structural notes, general notes. So for example, in here we have general notes, design criteria, your loads, uh, your live loads, your location. If you're in a area close to the to the sea, you're gonna be, you know, having to design specifically for that type of concrete. Uh, site preparation, how to do building paths, structural steel. It's just basically notes, like on everything that you do. So you should know this, like if you're like a contractor or if you're like uh, the constructor, whatever, the owner, everybody should know this. Everybody should be aware of this. The structural should know their typical notes. And that is like the first page when, of structural stuff. Then as you move forward, you're gonna start having other types of, of of things like usually like the second page uh, is usually like the plans uh, it depends also from company from company like the company I work they have a typical live load and wind load plant so basically they show all the loads so that people know what your design criteria and why special sections have certain design criteria like you're not gonna design a mechanical floor the same way you design a restroom or something like that or a classroom that has like a 40 PSF or like a like a mechanical floor, you can have one, 125 or 250 PSF. So you design that differently. So in our company, we, we do a plan for wind load, for wind loads, and a plan for light loads. That's like the next set of pages. This one uh, is a little different. This one here, it has typical drawings. And then it has like like pure plans and stuff like that. So in this in this type of set, let me see. And they don't, have, they don't do the wind or, or light, light load like that I mentioned, but our company does, and I do like that a lot. Uh, usually after that, you have your foundation plans. So basically you have uh, the lights, well, but maybe, hopefully you can see it there. But you have foundation plans, so for example, if you're doing footings, if you're doing piers, if you're doing whatever type of foundation, here you're in this shade, you're gonna be specifying uh, the size of your grade beams, the, the width of your footings, uh, you're gonna be just showcasing like the diameter of your pierce elevation stuff like that so basically that was next and then you start going up so for example you start with your foundation then the next sheet should be like I don't know third, second like like second floor third floor and so on so for example in here we just have a, a second floor with a, comp with a composite deck uh, composite beams so we're showing like oh you're gonna use girders like this W18 by 40 and then you're gonna have these horizontal beams the arrangement the columns and you keep going with that. Basically, you show like an overall plan of how it's gonna be working, up the up all the way to the roof, and you name the joists and everything like that. And then after that, like you start getting a little more funky. Like for example, in, in this set, for this a company I used to work with, they do like elevations, elevation views, like horizontal elevation views. Uh, some that that is that usually you have section cuts in a lot of companies. But this is not mandatory in a lot of areas. Uh, you usually have like frame elevations and brace elevations. You have some type of uh, cuts, but not like overall side plans. Only for like relevant sections, you know. Everything else should be should be more or less typical. Uh, and this also depends on the structural. But after after those, the structural notes, the side plan, the wind loads. Usually, like it's mostly I how the company likes to arrange it. But after that, like for example in here, they have these section cuts. And after that, what they have is just typical details. So for example, your typical details is basically 
uh, how to do like the slab, how to do like for example if you have an expansion joint or if you have like a cut up cut out opening or something like that. Uh, if there's like a carbon gutter, how are you gonna define that? Because you don't you cannot be doing drawing for every little carbon gutter or every little opening. So you do a typ typical detail that will tell you how to do this. Uh, typical joist connections, typical CMU walls, stuff like that. And after that, then you go into your specific details. Your specific details are like some special sections that don't occur in like ev in everywhere. So maybe like one or two areas have these special sections, and you do specific details and you do specific design for that. Um, and that's basically how it is. Like a lot of companies at the end of the oh sorry, that's not how it is. And usually at the end of structural drawings, they have like schedules or shadows, I don't know how to say it in English. And the schedule is basically, uh, I don't know, we have 24 by 30s uh, engravings, or we have so many girders, or we have so much steel. And you write it down in a table so that people can go and see, okay, here when we're building this, we're going to be using this type of material, we're going to be designing this type of pier, like, oh, I don't know, 40, 40, 40 feet deep pier with uh, X reinforcement number fives or whatever. So at the end you should have like a type of schedule that showcases all of that. Uh, and that's pretty much most of the structural drawings that, I, that I've encountered. Even if they are like something special, like I don't know, like a specific, specially designed frame or something like that, you will have that kind of continuity. Maybe you will not have a wind lobe and light bulb plan in a small frame or something like that. But, but that's how you should approach most of these structural drawings. And this is something that when you graduate from college and you start working on structural film, it can be overwhelming because you're used to like seeing books and like just focusing on one thing. And then you, you, you get to see structural drawings and you're like, oh my God, what is this? There's so much to read, so much to do. But this should be like a good overall overview of what you should expect like to see in every type of drawing. And it's, good, it's something that is good to remember. Is basically notes at the beginning, then it's basically plans, top plans like of the overall building, then you're gonna have typical details, then specific details and schedule. And that, that should be for most of your of your structural drawings. If, I hope you guys like this video. If you have any requests for any type of video that you want me to make, and you want me to do more problems or like hey Jorge I have this problem that I have. Uh, that I want to you to solve it or something, just send it to me and I'll look at it and I'll post the solution. I might make a video and if you like my videos, please subscribe, guys. Have a good one.